when GTA 5 released, all the way back in 2013, fans were excited to see what this long-awaited title would provide. Fun side activities, interactions or features that were popular in previous Grand Theft Autos were sure to make a return, alongside some new ones such as tennis, yoga and golf. But if like myself, you're an avid fan of Rockstar Games and have played most if not all of their previous titles, you will realise just how much didn't quite make it into GTA 5. Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming. If you guys enjoyed the following, be sure to hit like and if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel, why not consider doing so. If you wish to get in touch, you can do so by either using the comment section provided or finding me over on Instagram. So without further delay, let's get in to what we came here to see. When GTA 4 released in 2008, it was followed by two incredible DLCs, one of which, The Ballad of Gay Tony, introduced us to a never before seen feature in any Grand Theft Auto title, the Underground Fight Club. In a makeshift cage, protagonist Luis Lopez will pit himself against multiple enemies over a series of five rounds, each one increasing in difficulty in a fight to the death, with the winner being declared as the Liberty City Cage Fighting Champion. Similar to the Fight Club, the following only ever occurred in one GTA video game. In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, there's a bike park where CJ can try his luck at a BMX challenge. Located in Glen Park, South Central SA, players can test themselves against the countdown clock by performing insane stunt jumps and collecting time-reducing checkpoints, later competing against themselves to beat their best time. One feature that didn't make it into GTA 5 was the dating aspect. Players could do this in both San Andreas and GTA 4. As CJ, players would meet girls out in the world, each with their own preference to partners, with GTA 4 introducing a more up-to-date approach by using internet dating. In both games, the player could wine and dine their partners, forming a relationship with them, or with the hopes of taking things to the next level. Even though it was introduced into Grand Theft Auto Online, players of the GTA 5 single player never got to experience the joys of the casino. In the latter portion of San Andreas, CJ reaches the Las Venturas area, which is the game's parody of the activity-packed Las Vegas. It's here that the player can visit casinos and gamble on games such as video poker, a wheel of fortune, play slot machines, roulette and blackjack. Plus, there is track betting at a few locations in the game. Also, in GTA 4's DLCs, there are similar mini-games such as arm wrestling, high-low car games and drinking competitions. A small addition to this is in GTA Chinatown Wars, where the player can purchase scratch cards or lotto cards. Probably one of the most famous forms of travel in San Andreas was for the players to use the jetpack. This was acquired during the later stages of the game from Area 69. CJ not only uses this during a mission titled Green Goo, where he must attack a military train under the order of the truth, a peculiar associate of Carl's, but he can use it in Free Roam 2. On a side note, the jetpack can also be acquired using cheat codes, and it entered during the opening scene of San Andreas, where CJ is in the back of the patrol car, it will unlock all of the clothing stores at the beginning of the game. At one point in Grand Theft Auto 4, we've all had that inconveniently timed phone call from Roaming asking us to of course go bowling. Gamers can play a full 10 frames of this either alone or during a friend activity, or if they wish for a short one they can play a half game. GTA 4 is the only title in the series so far to let us step onto the lanes and test our skills. Aside from the obvious fun aspect of it, Winning a game of bowling is also required for 100% completion, giving you that extra incentive. One thing that has been part of the Grand Theft Auto series in almost all of its titles that never carried on over to GTA 5 is the pay and spray garages. Using these would allow the player to not only lose their wanted level when evading the cops, but would fix the car up, give it a brand new paint job 
and even changed the license plate to avoid detection. It was a fun aspect of the series and got gamers out of a quick jam when necessary, so why they removed it from GTA 5 is beyond me. In San Andreas, Rockstar Games introduced a feature that had never been seen in any other title, and that was the ability to attend driving schools. First unlocked, if memory serves me correctly, as CJ enters the city of San Fierro, players can challenge themselves to a driving school where they learn all kinds of stunts. Also, there's a bike school, a boat school and a pilot school, the latter of which was the only thing to make it into the Grand Theft Auto V. This pastime was not only fun and challenging, but also awarded CJ with a brand new vehicle for him to keep. Another feature that was stripped from GTA V was the remote control toys that the player could often use to cause some mayhem. One of the more famous missions involving this was the Demolition Man mission from GTA Vice City, where Tommy Vazetti was tasked with using an RC helicopter to blow up a construction site. We also saw the use of RC planes later in the game, with this being brought back for San Andreas during the optional side missions given to us by Zero, which takes us on over to number 10. Although players can purchase properties in GTA 5 and will often be asked to assist in running the business, this often results in just chasing thieves down or killing gang members who are attacking the property. But in the older Grand Theft Autos, these property missions were much more in depth, often coming with their own unique story. Zero in San Andreas' one, as well as purchasing one cars, was another. In Vice City, these were an important part of the story, such as the Malibu nightclub leading to a bank heist, and in Vice City stories, these were part of the premise for building the Vance Empire. San Andreas told the story of Carl Johnson as he struggled to cope with life in the Grove Street Families Gang, always yearning for something bigger. Through his time, especially in the earlier stages of the game, CJ is pressured into performing activities for the gang. One of these, which is the only time Rockstar implemented it into a title, was Home Invasions. Using a black box car van, CJ could break into homes and remove the occupants of their belongings before taking it to a lockup. This was a fun stealth activity that we never got to experience again. Although the Maze Bank Arena in GTA V hosts a popular mission, Fame or Shame, it doesn't serve any other purpose in the single player campaign. This was a disappointment to gamers, as Rockstar filled these types of arenas with activities in their previous titles. This was first featured in GTA Vice City, where Tommy could take part in car death match sports, such as the Blood Ring, and later in San Andreas, where CJ could race against other drivers, among other activities. This was a favoured pastime by players, and it's a shame to see that it didn't make it into GTA V. Hand to Hand has always been an entertaining form of combat in the GTA franchise, testing your skills against some unsuspecting NPC. Well, a popular activity that never made it into GTA V was featured back in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. A little while into the player's time with CJ, they could visit a gym, step into the ring or onto the mat, challenge a specific trainer and learn themselves some new fighting techniques. This varied from standard boxing, to Muay Thai, to Kung Fu. Also, while at the gym, the player could use the faculties to alter their physique. If you wished to lose some weight, CJ could hit the treadmill or exercise bike, or if you wanted to bulk up, the dumbbells and bench press machine are also available to use. With one of three gym locations scattered around the state of San Andreas, there was no real excuse not to stay in shape. While we're on the topic of nutrition, a feature that never made it into GTA V was the restaurants and vendors around the city. The option to visit these locations and fill yourself with either hot dogs, pizza or burgers has been in the Grand Theft Auto series for quite some time now. So aside from the drinks dispensers, it's unclear why Rockstar chose not to continue with this feature in their latest instalments. 
players looking for some downtime in the older Grand Theft Autos would also test their button mashing skills at the arcade machines dotted all around the cities. This first appeared in Vice City, where we could play games such as Pogo the Monkey or Degenetron, again in San Andreas with titles like Let's Get Ready to Bumble and Duality, and lastly in GTA 4 with the cubed game, a parody of Tetris. Although in GTA Online some of these activities were revived, as far as the single campaign goes, they unfortunately never made an appearance. The next activity is one of my favourites and was definitely a disappointment for me not to see it appear in GTA 5. Firstly, appearing in San Andreas and then later in GTA 4, players could relax at their local bars and play a game of pool. As CJ, you could wager against an opponent and earn yourself some cash. Or as Nico, you can invite friends along with you or even bring a date to show off your skills against. In every single Grand Theft Auto, from the original right up until GTA Online, all except for Grand Theft Auto 5, the player was able to have fun making car bombs. These were often featured in missions in the game, such as GTA 3's My Clips Last Lunch, where protagonist Claude is tasked with stealing Mike Ferrelli's vehicle, fitting it with an explosive device and watching the fireworks from a safe distance. Aside from being used in missions, the player could activate this at any time, causing mayhem on the streets. Although the option to watch television shows from the comfort of your own home has made an appearance in a couple of GTA games, there's nothing quite like going to see a real show. If Nico, either alone or with a friend, decides to visit the Split Sides Comedy Club in the Algonquin district of Liberty City, they can enjoy performances from real-world comedians such as Cat Williams, Ricky Gervais and alongside the Lost and the Dam DLC, Scotland-born Frankie Boyle. For a long time now, gamers have been able to partake in the import-export businesses in the Grand Theft Auto series. The player is given a list of vehicles and tasked with delivering them to a specific lockup each time receiving a reward. Even in San Andreas, there's a separate side business that CJ can purchase near his garage in Doherty, where himself and brother-in-law Cesar Villapando work together to requisition a more high-end range. This was yet another side activity that although appeared in GTA Online, never made it into the single player. There are many more activities in the older Grand Theft Auto games that didn't make it into GTA 5. If the video does well enough and you guys hit that like button to show me just how much you enjoyed it, I'll happily make a second one. If you wish to get in touch, you can do so by finding me over on the channel's Instagram page, which you'll find both on screen and linked in the video description. Remember that if you're new here and aren't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. I'd be grateful if you could share this with friends and family and help me on this road to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil of Phil B Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.